Schwartz trying to come in alone. Shoot! Ah! Redirected, score! Game seven, Montana St. Louis! We are going back to Tampa Bay! A Cavalier spinning, a Cavalier looking, trying to drop it off, brings it in himself, left it in the middle, shot, Welcome to another episode of Thunderstruck with your host, Philip Wunderlich, and of course, your co-host, Jake Ricker. Uh, Jake, yesterday was a trade deadline, and like you've mentioned before, the Bolts did not do anything. Um, like you said, they, you don't want to really mess with their chemistry too much. Um, you know, we had other players that were mentioned to the go to the Bolts, such as Wayne Simmons and uh, Hayes going elsewhere, and uh, even McQuaid, too. Uh he he went else he went also to the, uh, another team, and there's there's a few names that uh, haven't mentioned lately. But what do you think of, about what we did or didn't do yesterday? Yeah, it was an interesting interesting trade deadline. Um, I'm happy with the way things played out for us personally. Um, with not making a move, I think that was the right call here in the long run. Obviously, the Lightning are in a league of their own right now. I mean, they're just dominating the NHL. It's not even close. So. There's not much that this team can do to improve. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's definitely some things you know that you'd obviously like to see be better. Uh, but when you have a team that's this good, I don't think there's anything that you need to add. And like you mentioned, and as I said, uh, locker room presence is something that's really important and is really uh, underlooked sometimes. And you know, sometimes adding a guy can you know, potentially mess that up as guys are trying to get used to the team. And it's, I think it's just too risky, especially when you have a team like this. Yeah. And that's the thing too. I mean, we've been rolling all season long. Uh, I believe the, we've been in first place since November 22nd, I want to say. So, I mean, you can't, you can't really mess with the chemistry too much. Uh, you know, Wade Simmons did go to Nashville for what would seem to be a pretty low price. Uh, he, he got traded for Austin Watson, who is a decent player, a decent roster player. And not sorry, not Austin Watson. Uh, Ryan Hartman, sorry, Ryan Hartman. Uh, Ryan Hartman got traded, and a, and a fourth rounder. Uh, to over there, and you know, uh, one of our writers, John, kind of said that you know we could have paid Adam Ernie and a third round pick for him. But like you said, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we did the right thing by not going for that. Yeah, Wayne Simmons is a, is a great player, especially when it comes to grit. Uh, he's also been pretty decent on the power play as well. But I I just don't see him fitting in too well with the Bolts. The Bolts are a, a team that likes to play with speed, and Wayne Simmons is not a huge speed guy. Um, he's definitely been declining over the last few years as he's getting older. And has had a couple of injuries and surgeries, so uh, definitely not a terrible thing to add at a deadline for a team. I think it worked out great for Nashville. I think Nashville could really use Simmons, and I, I think it's a good deal for them. But I just, I just don't see the need for the Bolts. And I think, you know, like I, like I said, there's no need to add a guy like that. You just we're playing so well. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, uh, you know, going to Nashville, I think they really won the day. Um, you know, they got Mikhail Granlin for Kevin Fiala, which, in my opinion, is a real under underpayment uh, going to Minnesota uh, because Mikhail Granlin is a 60-point guy very easily, and he has been for quite some time now. So that's that's a good move for them. Of course, they got Ke- uh, Brian Boyle. Uh, that was a few weeks ago. Uh, and then, like we mentioned, they got uh, Wayne Simmons as well. Uh, who do you think won the day, though? Uh, I think Nashville definitely had a fantastic day at the trade deadline. Uh, like you mentioned, all those moves were really good. They didn't give up too much to get the players they got, and they've upgraded at multiple positions. Uh, personally, though, I like what Columbus is doing. I think Columbus did really good at the trade deadline. Added a couple bigger pieces while keeping Panarin and Bobrovsky. 
or Bar- Barborski, sorry. Um, so I, I like what they did. I think, you know, a lot of people are questioning what they're doing as they gave, they, they did give up a lot to upgrade the positions they did. But I think this is Columbus's way of saying, listen, we know we might lose a couple of our superstars, guys like Panarin, uh, but we're going to go all out here and show this, this, uh, city, uh, that we we want to make a run and we're serious um, and this is it and that if we do end up losing these players uh, we're not going to waste their last season here. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Uh, like I mentioned before the show, uh, it the GM of the Columbus Blue Jackets is basically saying, you know, let's make a run at it. And a Timmy Panarin and uh, Sergey Bobrovsky are really their own rentals. Um, you know, it's because their contracts expire at the end of the year. They might most likely will not resign with the team and they bring over Matt Duchesne, which of course is a very dominant offensive player and Ryan Dezingle there as well. And, you know, Ryan Dezingle and uh, Matt Duchesne have that chemistry going because they both played on Ottawa. So, uh, and I don't know if you saw that Jake, but uh, when Matt Duchesne came back to get his stuff, he also brought his wife, his girlfriend, and uh, Dezingle with him. Yeah, I did see that. It was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, but you're right, though. Uh, I think these guys have chemistry and that it's going to work out very nicely for Columbus. I mean, you think about it, it's a smart move. If Columbus goes on a run here and makes it uh, past a couple of rounds, you know, guys like Panarin and Baborski could say, hey, you know what? This team looking pretty good right now. We could easily win a cup with these guys next couple of years, and maybe a lot of these guys end up re-signing with them. So... Uh, I think it's a smart move uh, when you look at potentially, you know, losing these guys. You could say you could have moved Panarin um, and get something for him, but uh, I think this is another approach that works just as well, and they're going all in, which which I like to see from a team, you know, that's kind of iffy and they need to make a decision here. Yeah, and like you said about uh, about the team there, you don't really know what's going to happen in the offseason. I mean, like I said, they could be their own rentals, but at the same time, they could resign. Uh, you don't really know what's going to happen there, and of course, Matt Duchesne would, was a uh, was a great player when he was on Ottawa. He was their points leader, and you know he's going to provide that to that team as well. And you know, playing for Tortorella, I mean, I've I've heard many good things playing with him. I mean, he's definitely a player's coach. Uh, you, you know, I might make some funny comments here and there, especially I don't know if you heard about it, but. Uh, when they ta- when they had uh, Ant- Atemi Panarin out, uh, Tortorella kind of touched on the subject that he basically shit his pants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tor- Tortorella can make some crazy comments at times. He also answered uh, somebody's cell phone when he was doing an interview and talked to the to the person that called, which was pretty funny as well. But uh, he's a little crazy. But um, you know, Ottawa dealt a couple other players too. Um, one of them being Mark Stone. To Vegas. What'd you think about that one? Yeah, uh, the you know the Golden Knights are definitely going to make try to make another run. Uh, you know they did make it to the Stanley Cup final last year uh, when they played against the uh, Washington Capitals. Uh, unfortunately for us, the Washington Capitals did win that series. But you know it, it's 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 a good signing. Uh, you know they did they did give up a, a really good prospect arguably one of the best prospects to come up into the league right now. Um, that's what they are mentioning before. It's definitely an A-plus defensive prospect. But, I mean, granted, you are paying a lot for him. But, you know, going into the uh, contracts, you know, he is likely to sign this eight eight-year $9.5 million. And like you mentioned, Jake, that's the same money that Nikita Kucherov is making. Yeah, it's a little crazy. Honestly, I think that price is a little high, but I don't think they actually gave up too much for him, uh, considering they didn't give a give up a first round pick, which I thought was kind of crazy. I think that Ottawa should have asked for a first round pick for a guy like Mark Stone, and Mark Stone is, you know, a really good player. He's got sixty point sixty two points, I believe, right now as of this mark of the season uh, or this point in the season, which which is by no means um, bad at all. He's played very well, but to get 9.5, which is a guy like Nikita Kucherov is getting. Kucherov already has over 100 points, is breaking multiple uh, NHL records, so to speak, in the in this cap era. 
He's breaking lightning franchise records. I mean, he's just on, he's in a league of his own, so to speak. And he's improved every year, continuously getting better. Uh, so, you know, when you compare him to Nikita Kucherov, I don't think he deserves 9.5 million, but uh, he still is definitely a great player and a great upgrade for Vegas. Yeah. And, you know, with the trade, uh, Mark Stone is actually their leading scorer now. Uh, you know, he had 29 goals before coming to Vegas. And I believe he had over 60 points as well. So, I mean, that's not a bad player at all. Um, so, getting that, it really gives, like I said, it gives them another run uh, or hopefully another run here. Uh, and then, the, you know, trade deadline is always one of my favorite things. Uh, time, time of year, you know, wait, you waking up early in the morning. It's almost like Christmas morning. You don't know what's going to happen until it starts happening. Yeah, it can be very exciting, and it can be really, uh, you know, you get a lot of tension going on too, especially because uh, a lot of moves end up don't start, especially as of late. Moves have not come in until the later hours, you know, when there's under an hour to go. I mean, we saw, again, last year and this year, trades, the big trades trickling in at just at 3 o'clock, right, when the trade deadline hits. So um, it's, it's definitely a lot of fun. And, you know, even when your team uh, is is not – doing much like the lightning who stood pat at the deadline. Uh, it's still very exciting to see all the other big moves going down. Yeah. And like you mentioned too, uh, trade deadline though, it's, it's, it's kind of a, uh, you know, if, if, th- if you think about the human aspect too, though, I mean, it's kind of a sad thing. I don't know if you saw the, uh, the video with Henrik Lundqvist basically crying when uh, Matt Zuccarello was traded. Because, yeah. you know, he's been in the, dec- he's been in the uh, same team together for over a decade. And slowly but surely, he's losing everybody off of his team that he played with. So, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's a great time of year for us fans. But at the same time, you got to think about the players' aspect as well. Uh, Henrik Lundqvist is always a guy that likes to talk to the media. And he couldn't even talk to the media for 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty crazy, uh, especially to see a guy like him do that you know he's a he's a big time name in the nhl um and he has seen basically every single one of his teammates <laughs> to be gone from when uh you know a couple of years back um you know i think it, it's it's hard for these players but they understand too that th- this is the business they're in and this is how things go and it's interesting too because lundquist has made the decision to stay in new york and i know this because they talked about um on nhl radio uh, during the trade deadline yesterday, that a team had actually called New York and acquired in on Lundquist. Um, I think people believe it was the Blue Jackets, uh, which is pretty yeah. interesting to think about. But and Lundquist obviously said no; he wants to be a Ranger, and he's all for it. So, you know, Lundquist has got the option to go out there and and get his own change of scenery. But it just shows his commitment to the New York Rangers. Yeah, that's the thing too. Like you mentioned. Uh, he's a superstar, and he could basically play for whatever team he wanted to. Um, you know, he is a, p- a pricey goalie, um, but at the same time, having that kind of experience and having that kind of, you know, mindset and play style that he has, I mean, 90% of the teams in this league would love to have someone like that, but he's dedicated to his team. And the final thing that I want to really touch up on the trade deadline is – uh you know, like you mentioned before, too, a lot of these deals come in late. Um, you know, on Ryan McDonough, he got traded at 3 o'clock last year, uh, and it really paid off for us. So, you know, it, it's just it's just interesting to see how sometimes that stuff happens. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's go back here a little bit, and we'll start talking about the Lightning's play recently. Um the Lightning now have over 100. Uh, they actually have exactly 100 points uh, as a t- at the time of recording this episode here, and uh, it's 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 amazing to see this because it's only been 63 games and four other teams have been able to do that uh, within the, those small amount of games. I believe. Let me. I have the screenshot here of who did it. The the. 1971 to 72 Bruins, the 1976 to 77 Canadians, the 1977 to 78 Canadians, and of course our 2018 2019 Lightning. Yeah, this is only the the fourth team to do it in 63 games played, which is absolutely 
amazing. I mean, that's, you know, that just let that stat kind of sink in for a minute. I mean, those those teams that you just listed are really good teams and some of the best teams in the NHL. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, one of those Canadians teams holds the record uh, for most most wins. So, uh, or sorry, most points. They have the best record in the NHL. So, to be in that sort of company is is really saying something that this team is absolutely on another level. I mean, it's just not even close. They've, there's so many points ahead of their division. There's so many points ahead of the entire league. And uh, they continue to go on this dominant run. I mean, we are witnessing history right now. Yep. Uh, you, you know, it, and it's amazing too because, like I mentioned before, with Nikita Kucherov uh, getting – all those points. I mean, he's, he himself has over a hundred points. Uh, and it's just amazing to see that. And the only two other people to ever do that was Mario Lemieux and, uh, Yarmer Yager. So, I mean, he has great, he's great company there, uh, with those two super superstars and they're only getting those, uh, amount of points within some little games played. Oh yeah, and he's still so young too. I mean, you know, this is his what his fourth year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he's, he's got plenty of years ahead of him as we we continue down, you know, the NHL seasons here. So uh, it can only get better from here, honestly. I, there's there's not much. It's super exciting to watch. It's it's amazing. Kucherov is uh, getting close. He's already broken one franchise record. He's getting close to breaking his second. Um, Vinny's record for points uh, currently set at 108. And so he'll probably be breaking that in the next couple of days, which is which is just crazy. Um, and the Lightning continued to roll, like I said. Uh, they broke or they tied um, their franchise record for most wins in a row here at nine, uh, which is pretty cool too. Um, they could break the record tomorrow night against the Rangers if they get the win. Yeah, <laughs> I mean this, this team is on fire. Uh, Nikita Kucherov deserves the heart already. I mean, <laughs> it's it's insane. And you know, it's a great time to be a Lightning fan. Um, you know, and going to these games, uh, I'm going to start going into the uh, kind of going into the games and saying, you know, what our th- thoughts about it were. Um, like we mentioned, they played the uh, they played the first game that we, they played since we did our last podcast was against the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, and we won that game in dominant fashion. As we got uh, five goals compared to Columbus's one goal, and Kucherov broke the franchise record for the assist in this game. Yeah, this is another big game for the Lightning. The Lightning have dominated the Blue Jackets uh, every single time we've played them. Uh, we've played them three times this season. I believe that was the last and final time we'll play them this season, and it's just been a repeat. Uh, every single night, the Lightning just constantly beating up on them. So, uh, you know, it kind of stinks that we don't play them again because I'd be interested to see how these players are going to change this Columbus team uh, that they added at the trade deadline. So uh, they are a potential first-round matchup if they sneak in to the playoffs here. Uh, they're currently one point out of the of the playoffs behind the Pittsburgh Penguins, and they have a game in hand as well. So uh, they're definitely a first round potential first-round matchup, and but the Lightning have just had their number all season long so far. Yeah, and like you said, they, they could even be our, our first-round matchup. Um, you know, the Penguins are barely holding on with by a thread there. And, I mean, I really don't want to play the Penguins, especially in the first round, uh, despite despite our success this year against them. Uh, they're You know, they're always kind of a playoff team. You never know what's going to come out of them. Yeah, and they're definitely a little more physical than Columbus's, I would say. So, uh, you know, you always want an easier team to start off with so your team's not banged up coming out of the first round. But obviously, I think we could beat anybody that we get. But uh, we'll see when that time comes. Yeah, and then uh, the following game there, the Bolts headed to Philadelphia to face off against Carter Hart and the Flyers. Um, (laughs) This was an interesting one because Carter Hart got pulled early. Yeah, Lightning jumped on him quick. Yeah, and we won five to and we won five to two, and you know it's another game getting four or more goals, and this is something that we've seen all year. Phil, do you know what the big difference in this game was between the other games we've played against Philly? That they didn't come back and we didn't w- win in overtime. <laughs> exactly, it wasn't a six to seven overtime game. <laughs> 
Yeah, I've been been getting tired of uh, seeing those overtime games against Philadelphia that we literally set on the lead, and then they come back and uh, you know the Lightning do win them, but you know it's always scary thought when they come back and uh, to that that kind of numbers there. Right, and the funny thing was too, it, this was a two nothing game for the longest time, and then Philly almost came back and tied it in the third period uh, when they had their goalie pulled too. So it almost happened again, but luckily. Uh, things changed and it did not. Yeah, and then in this game as well, uh, ex Bolt Radko Gudis got suspended for two games and high sticking Nikita Kucherov. I mean, he really took a whack at him. Uh, it was looking like more like Paul Bunyan out there. Yeah, that was an interesting play by Gudis. Not sure what his uh, thoughts were on that or what um, he hoped to accomplish from that, especially, you know, against a, f- a former team of his too, which is interesting. So definitely not the best play from Radko Gudis and he got suspended rightfully. So, um, so that, I don't know, is not, not the best play by Gudis and is definitely not gonna look good for him down the road. Uh, but what did you think about the, uh, no goal call here in this one? Uh, the, excuse me, <clears throat> the Flyers scored a goal late, in the third period when they had their goalie pulled um, and the goal was waved off for goaltender interference. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I did see that. And, uh, you know, Louis Domingue got pushed. And uh, luckily for us, the goal did not count uh, as it shouldn't have. So, you know, that's that's one thing that you mentioned too. I mean, the Flyers almost did come back in this one. And luckily this call went our way. Yeah, I didn't personally... Uh, it was kind of a close call. I think it was really hard to tell from the replays. Uh, I think there was a lot of, you know, the puck looked like it wasn't fully under doming and it did slide over, but he was pushed into the net. So it was really close and there wasn't a lot of good angles, I think. But um, I think overall he was pushed into the net um, despite, I think it was uh, Claude Drew, I think, who pushed him in the net with his stick. Um, so it was a close play, but I think it was the right call at the end of the day. But um, it ended up not mattering too much because Lightning did end up scoring an empty netter later on, making it five to two. So even if Philly does get that goal, uh, it's five to three at that point. Uh, and you could argue it would have changed the momentum, but at the end of the day, uh, the Bolts win this one five to two. So. Yep, and that's exactly what we wanted. That's exactly what we wanted to see of any game. And you know, the, the following game there, we looked for our eighth win in a row, and we got it against the Sabers. Um, you know, we won this one with a closer, closer uh, matchup here, winning only two to one, and I believe this was in uh, overtime too. Correct? It was a shootout. Yeah, shootout. Yeah, this so, was um, definitely a low-scoring game, which we're not too used to to see with this Bolts team, as they constantly put up five or more goals. It seems like every game, but you know, this again, this shows that even when the Lightning are not playing at the, the highest level they can be, they're still getting things done, you know. Uh, this was a more defensive game. Vassy, again, made some ridiculous saves, as he continuously does throughout the season. Um, and the offense got it done when it needed to be got done. They did it in the shootout. So, you know, obviously, you don't want to see it go that long, but um, at the end of the day, two points is two points, so. Yep, and that's the same way that it happened against the Kings, too. I mean, we won in a shootout. Uh, you know, in my opinion, the Bolts kind of sat on the lead. Um, you know, we were we were winning, and then the Kings went up and tied it. So, I mean, that's not really what you want to see, but luckily Victor Hedman got it done in the shootout. Yeah, this was a... Uh, a lot of people were actually complaining about this game, uh, which is kind of crazy to me because the Bolts did end up winning the game and now have tied the franchise record, like I mentioned, for wins in a row. So, yes, was it not a pretty game and there's a lot of things that they could have done better absolutely but at the end of the day you know this is what makes this team so special is that like we said even when they're playing bad they're finding ways to get it done and it's all about you know does this continue if this obviously continues down the next couple of games where they're not playing that good against the rangers they barely squeaked by in that one they barely squeaked by the bruins here in a couple of days you know then i think it becomes a cause for a problem but when they have every once in a while had these kind of games, even if it is against a team like the Los Angeles Kings, I don't think it's that much of a concern. I really don't. This is why we have guys like Vassy. This is why we have such good um, penalty kills and power plays is to bail us out in situations like this. Um, but also, by the way, how about how many? How about the post in that game? I mean, we hit the post what four different times in this one? 
yeah, the the clear MVP of this game was the post uh, behind uh, Jack Campbell over there. I mean, <laughs> the post really saved the game. I think Steven Samkos himself hit the post three times. Yeah, and not not only hit the post, but hit it square too. I mean, it was the loudest uh, hit you you could have heard. I mean, it, he could not have hit the post any better. Uh, the Kings also hit a couple of posts as well too, which is crazy to think, but uh, Lightning definitely hit a bunch of them. Yeah, and like you said, it, the sh- the shot was loud. I mean, it, it gives a whole new meaning. They shot around the world because uh, I mean that was a loud one. Um, but you know, and like you said, the bolts uh, keep rolling. Uh, we have nine wins in a row now, and we're looking towards the next one as we go against the. Uh, New York Rangers and see some familiar faces there. Yeah, this will be a fun one. Uh, I think Domingue is going to start this one if I had to take a guess because this is a back-to-back here. So play the Rangers on the 27th and then Boston on the 28th. So I would expect Domingue to start in this one and Vasi to play Boston just because Boston is considered the better team. So it'll be interesting to see who they put in net for these games. Yeah, and then, you know, as... Um, Boston did make a few moves as recently as well. Uh, you know, they did get Marcus Johansson and they've got Charlie Coyle, which are some good moves for them. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting matchup to see against them here come uh, Thursday. Yeah, definitely some moves that I think definitely upgraded the Boston Bruins. Uh, but in the end of the day, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um, we haven't played the Bruins too many times if I'm not mistaken have we played them yet this season I feel like we have yeah we've had, we played them um I think yep, we played them in December and beat them three to two uh I yeah. think that was the only time so far this season I, I think so yeah, and yeah. We, we played the Bruins three uh it, it can, uh, a total of three times uh towards the end of the season here yeah, the schedule is a little weird when you think about it because uh, we haven't played Washington yet either, uh, which we're playing them not even uh, till a little while too. So, um, But nevertheless, uh, it should be a fun game fun game to watch to see uh, how this these players that Boston added, how much of a difference that ends up making. So uh, I think I have a feeling personally that the Bolts offense will come alive either here against the Rangers or the Bruins especially. Um, and I think that we win both these games. Yeah. And then the the following game is is against the rebuilding Senators. Uh, you know, and now since they don't have Mark Stone, they don't have Matt, they don't have Matt Duchesne. Uh, I mean, it's, it should be a pretty easy win. Uh, at least I'm hoping so. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody said about the Kings, though, too. And we made it a little bit closer than we would have liked. But uh, yes, on paper, this should be an easier game. The hardest game here, obviously, is going to be Boston. Uh, especially coming off a of back-to-back. Um, and it'll be the most fun one, too, I think, to watch. Yeah, and then the last game we want to kind of talk about is against the Jets. Um, one of the players that I would like to see come to the Bolts is Kevin Hayes. Kevin Hayes did go to the Jets. So, you know, you, you get to see a new face on that Jets lineup, and it's going to be a good it's going to be a good offensive game. Yep, um, uh, s- either- same thing with, um, with, you know, I'll go same with Boston. This is another team who added a player. It'll be interesting to see how much that affects them. Um, yeah, we have played Winnipeg one other time, so I am excited to see how we fare against a team like Winnipeg, who's one of the best in the league. So uh, another big test for the Lightning coming up here uh, in the later part of the season. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's I believe that's it that we kind of want to touch on. Do you have anything else you'd like to mention there, Jake? Not too much. Uh, I just want to reiterate again that, you know, this is a really special season for the Bolts. I mean, so many records they've been breaking. They're the first team, you know, to be doing things in the cap era. Uh, there's so many, I can't even list them right now. The players are breaking franchise records left and right. I mean, this is a very special team. The Lightning have a very good chance at breaking uh, the record for most wins in a single season. I, I mean, that's that's ridiculous. The NHL has been around for over 100 years, right? Um, so... To break a record like that is just outstanding. I mean, this is a very special team. So I just seen a lot of people saying this on Twitter recently. Enjoy it right now. You're witnessing history right now, and even when the team does struggle a little bit, I you know don't don't fret too much. This is a this is a fun team to watch. Yeah, and absolutely, it's a fun team to watch. And well, since we love the Bolts so much, it's even more fun to watch for us. 
uh, you know, and a few experts are, have the Lightning winning the Cup, and hopefully it comes true. Um, but until then, we will see you all next week. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Have a good one, and we will see you next week.